Good morning. Uh, welcome to our Savior, especially those of you who are watching from home. We're glad that you're with us on this cold day, although yesterday was worse. So uh, as we begin our Lenten worship this morning, let us begin by singing the first song, You Say I Am, Who I Am. Who, who You Say I Am. You're that. <laughs> Oh, 
of the triune God that we were baptized. As we begin our Lenten journey, we remember our baptism. We remember we were made members of God's family. Though we are baptized and united with Jesus, we often act as if we were separated from Jesus. There are times when we fall prey to Satan and his temptations. There are times when sin reigns within us. Still, our Heavenly Father is merciful, and he invites us to draw near to him in repentance, asking for forgiveness. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we have ignored your help in resisting Satan and his temptations. We have sinned against you in our thoughts, words, and actions. Yet our entire lives are lives of repentance. Have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and lead us in righteousness on account of Jesus. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son, Jesus Christ, to endure temptation, suffering, and death for us and our salvation. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are forgiven. We are baptized into Christ. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you endured the temptations of Satan in the wilderness. Be present with us on our Lenten journey towards the cross and empty tomb. Always mindful of our identity as those baptized in your name, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. is from Genesis 22. Now it came about after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, take now your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son. And he split wood for the burnt offering, and arose, and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham raised his eyes and saw the place from a distance. Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey, and I, with the lad, will go over there, and we will worship and return to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. 
Then they came to the place of which God had told them, and Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood and bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not stretch out your hand against the lad and do nothing to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from the thicket from me. Then Abraham raised his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering, offering in the place for his son. Abraham called the place, called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it will be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, indeed I will greatly bless you and I will greatly multiply your seed as the stars of the heavens and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your seed shall possess the gate of your enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from James 1. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. For once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. Then when lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. In the exercise of his will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, so that we would be, be a kind of first fruits among his creatures. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able for the reading of our Holy Gospel, which this morning is from the first chapter of Mark's Gospel. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Immediately coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opening and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice came out of the heavens. You are my beloved son, in you I am well pleased. Immediately the spirit impelled him to go out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts and the angels were ministering to him. Now after John had been taken into custody, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. We can faith, confess the faith to which we hold using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we confess, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
I invite children to come forward for the children's message, especially those watching from home this after morning. I'll wait for my buddy Ivan to get up here. Ivan, do you have a favorite superhero? No? How about you? No favorite? Jonathan? No one? Anybody got a favorite superhero? Batman. Batman. All right, Batman. He always is out there to defeat the Joker. And then there's Spider-Man, right? He gets out after the Green Goblin. Yeah. So superheroes have a special job to do, right? They're supposed to defeat the enemy, the bad guy. Is the Green Goblin and the Joker real people? They're just characters right in this story. But there are some really bad people in this world. Some people that we can't even see that are really bad. This morning we heard about Jesus in the wilderness and he, was, he had to defeat a bad guy. Do you remember who he defeated? Satan. Oh, right. So we don't know what Satan looks like, the devil looks like. So people have kind of done all kinds of pictures of him. I found this one. Isn't that a scary guy? I wouldn't want to meet him. I, I would really, really be afraid of him. And the devil's job is to make sure that uh, we do something bad. He's always trying to get us to do something wrong. Maybe hit our brother or sister or yell or say something bad about somebody or kick somebody or just do something really naughty. You know what we call that when the devil tries to get us to do something naughty? We call that temptation. It means that he's saying, come on, let's go do this. And sometimes we'll say, oh, no, I'm not going to do that. That's wrong. But sometimes we do it. And the devil wins, we think. And once the devil gets us to do the things that he thinks are bad or wants us to believe are bad, then he says, you're no good. And we believe that, that the devil wants us to believe that God doesn't love us anymore. But that's where, the, where Jesus comes in this morning because he's our real superhero because he's the one that came to defeat Satan and we know he did it in the gospel lesson this morning when he defeated Satan with the temptations. But also on Good Friday when he died on the cross for us, he made sure the devil knew that he was the lost one. So the good news is that we have a superhero, Jesus, who is our good friend, who's there to take care of us, to love us, and to forgive us, and to help us always do good. So remember, that when the enemy tries to get a hold of you, that you got a superhero, you got Jesus who will come and help you say no to him. Amen. Let's sing the next song now.
mercy and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I think. Do I get a picture? This is my sainted mother at my favorite place in Freeport, the Union Dairy. My mother was a fantastically amazing person. She had a memory like no one I've ever, ever met. In the days when Illinois had only one high school basketball division, she could tell you who had won the tournament for the last 15 years, because she was such an avid basketball fan of high school basketball. She kept these detailed records of every trip we ever took. And if somebody said, didn't we go someplace on this trip? She said, wait a minute. And she knew exactly which book to pull out and exactly where to go to read what we did at that place. She was unbelievable. I can remember um, she would say something like, oh, I ran into to Grace Rampenthal, and they go, okay, who's Grace Rampenthal? And she said, well, she's your fourth cousin. And she would start at the, the root of the family tree with my grandmother and somehow get us way out on this branch that completely got me lost. But she could remember the family tree like no one else could. But what really blew my mind was one day when I was in the seminary and I came home for the weekend and I went to church with my parents. On the way home, my mom said, Pastor preached that sermon a couple of years ago. <laughs> and I go, oh my God, this is not good when my mom can remember that far back a sermon of all things. But it did teach me the lesson Never, ever repeat a sermon, <laughs> especially in the same parish. But she was also so amazing. Every Sunday, she would sit down and write a letter to all five of us about what happened in the family over the weekend, over that last week. She could remember everything, including the bridge hand she had on Monday night. We always relished getting the, the first copy because she used carbon paper. And if you were the fourth carbon, it sometimes was hard to read. Thankfully, she learned how to use a computer. But every Sunday night, she was there, writing that letter, thinking of us, letting us know what life was like, and making sure that we understood that we were still part of the family, even though we were far, far away. I think looking back on all of that, I really didn't appreciate the time that uh, I spent with her as much as I should. I failed to pay attention to a lot of the things she said when I should have, because there's a lot of things I would love to ask her now. And sometimes I had the same feeling as an adult, that somehow when I'm looking at other people, I am really not paying good enough attention. I may see that they're not going through something that is so good. And yet, somehow, their pain doesn't really touch me for one reason or another. I don't understand it. I don't know how to help. I don't know how to handle it. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. Life is hard. I get that. But how do we react to people who are going through difficult times? I mean, we don't even sometimes know how to react to our own burdens. And so that reminds me this morning as we begin this Lenten season of Mark's Gospel. What's very interesting is on the first Sunday in Lent, we always hear about our Lord's temptation. Now the other Gospel writers go into great detail about how Satan tempted Jesus, what Jesus said, what Satan said, what Satan tried to get him to do and what Jesus did. Mark simply says, Jesus went into the wilderness and was tempted by the devil. He says that happened just after our Lord's baptism. And right before John's arrest, John the Baptist. Somehow in that high point of our Lord's baptism, 
and trying to deal with John's death and arrest came a very low point in our Lord's life. He ended up in the wilderness for 40 days. I cannot imagine not eating for 40 days. We simply know that he was in the wilderness. We, the evangelists tell us he was with the beasts and there were angels there. And I guess we have to spend our imagination with Mark trying to figure out what Jesus was doing in the wilderness. Having been a Boy Scout, I know that one of the great things about Boy Scouting is wilderness camping. And it, it's this great adventure that the scouts seem to go on. And we go either to Philmont or uh, the Northwoods or someplace like that. And it's a very beautiful place. And somehow we get the idea that wilderness is a good thing. And yet in this case, this is not the Northwoods. It's not New Mexico's beautiful mountain ranges. No, this is out in a, a desert in some place really dreary where there was nothing, no water hardly, nothing to keep you going. And somehow Jesus must have really been tested with his survival skills. And, and yet somehow he made it. I'm sure that he missed his time with his friends and his family, the comforts of home. He would be left with his own thoughts, his doubts, his fears, as he was out there all by himself and never knowing what kind of animal would come roaring out from behind whatever hill there was. And it also gave him time to think about why he was here, about why he came to earth and what his mission and his ministry was. And so while he was in the wilderness, somehow Jesus found time to clarify his thoughts about why he was here, what God wanted him to be doing, and making sure that he understood that God was with him no matter what happened. And so when he left that place, he would return to Galilee and he would start proclaiming the good news. He would tell the people, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is here. But he remembered his wilderness time. And I think we all remember the challenges of some wilderness that we had to face. Some temptation the devil tried to get us to do that would have really destroyed our lives. Something that we don't want anyone else to know about us. Sometimes we don't understand why the pain and the misery that we go through is there. And sometimes we struggle so much with life. But you know, there's something about that time in the wilderness that helps us remember that God is here too, that God is with us, that the angels are ministering to us in ways that we cannot, be, cannot see. We are not alone. Although the wilderness sometimes we choose to go into because of our own stupidity or false ideas about what is a good thing to do, but other times we find ourselves in places we never expected to be, in problems and we just don't know how to deal with. So like the gospel today, that wilderness experience sometimes really comes after a time when we thought life was going pretty well. How often has it been that you're going along really well and life looks good and all of a sudden, there it is. A problem, a disaster, bad news, something gone wrong, and suddenly you're lost, you're struggling, you're confused, and that's your wilderness. For some it might be loneliness, for some it might be economic uncertainty, it could be sickness, it could be pain, it could be the anxiety of watching a loved one slowly leave this world. Sometimes we wonder, how did I ever get here? Why am I here? What does this mean for me, for, for those around me? We catch the glimpses of pain and we don't know what to do with it. But as people of faith, we know that in the wilderness, there was something that be came before it. And that was our baptism. And so we go back to our baptism. We go back to that event where God claimed us to be his own, 
where he said, you are my beloved child. I am with you. Listen to me, and I will get you through the problems that you face. For life will never be easy, that's for sure. But you will survive if you walk with me. I will walk through those dark places with you. I will lead you. I will guide you. I will help you overcome temptation. And so in those moments of wilderness in our lives, it's a time for us to look to God and to say to him, Lord, what's this all about? What lesson are you trying to teach me? We heard the story about Abraham and Isaac this morning. Talk about a lesson Abraham learned. A lesson of great faith. When God asked him to almost do the impossible, the unthinkable, he had faith that somehow God was going to work that out. And so Abraham went into that wilderness up on that mountain with his son, fully believing that he was going to come back alone, but not sure what that would all mean. And yet there on the mountain, the Lord provided. Abraham's faith was tested, and he came through, and God blessed him. I'm sure that time after time, Abraham would go back to that day and remember how God had been with him, how God had blessed him, and how God had promised, and that God would keep all the promises he ever made. And so no matter how we are, when we look at our life, and the problems we face. We go back to that mountain experience of our baptism and we hear the Lord say, I have provided, you are my child. And let's face it, during these last few years, we have all been through some kinds of wildernesses that we never ever expected to face. Somehow there was that moment back way in the March of 2020 when everything was shut down. Who would have ever thought four weeks before that, that life would so radically be different? Our lives got changed in so many ways. We were separated from the friends we love, separated from the places we wanted to go. Many of us lost loved ones to that horrible disease. And even now, Years after the, the whole thing began, we're still not sure as we're out of the wilderness. By the time you turn around, it seems like COVID's coming back. There's RSV, there's some kind of fungal thing. There's all kinds of horrible things that we go, will we ever be safe? Will we ever, ever know love and peace and joy again? Or is it all a far off dream? Well, we can be assured that even in the midst of our daily lives now, God continues to be with us, calls us to believe in him, to repent of those times when we have failed to trust in him, to turn to him in our every need. We are invited to see that the kingdom of God is here now in our lives, in our world, that a savior who did not shy away from temptation and death for us is here to lift us up, to guide us, and to give us strength. He is that rock in that wilderness that gives us hope. He is the one who leads us out to better places, reminds us of his blessings, and tells us, do not fear. The wilderness will not overcome. The promised land lies ahead. Amen. And now may the peace of God that goes beyond our human understanding keep your hearts and minds on Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Please stand as you are able, as your offerings are brought forward. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, Certainly you are a God who is trustworthy. We bring these gifts which you have given to us with the prayer that they be used that others may come to learn of Jesus Christ and put their faith and their trust in him and in you. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, you are our sword and shield against the attacks of Satan. As we journey through this Lenten season, protect us from the assaults of the devil, remind us of our baptism, and keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, every good and perfect gift comes from you. Thank you for the many blessings you have poured into our lives. Help us to accept what you give and ask for what we need. Protect us from a life of perpetual dissatisfaction and lead us toward a life of gratitude. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord God, you sent Jesus into our world to bear our temptations and share in our sorrows. Bring your comfort to all those who are suffering in grief. Point them to the hope of resurrection and eternal life with you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Lord God, we pray for all those who are not yet baptized into Christ, that the Spirit would lead them toward the promises of baptism and the family of the church. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Lord God, we pray for our nation and its leaders, for President Biden and Vice President Harris and their staffs, for Congress and all lawmakers, for the Supreme Court and all judges. We pray that you, Lord, would make your ways and paths known to them, that you would lead them in the truth and teach them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Lord God, look with favor upon all who are sick, injured, and recovering. Especially, we ask that you would be with William and Nancy Walker. We pray, too, for a successful surgery for Gary Franz to repair a quad tear. We pray for a quick and complete recovery for him. We pray, too, that you continue to be with our church, with um, our ministries, especially our men's Bible study. We pray that many may come to know of Jesus Christ and place their trust in him through, your, through the ministry here of our Savior Lutheran Church. We pray, too, Lord, that you would be with Laura Papsiak, that you would give her good test results and be with her and her ongoing health issues and also, too, for Jan with her ongoing health issues. Lord, have mercy upon them. Restore them to health according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, be with those who celebrate birthdays this week. Fred Colossa, Lauren Krieger, Logan Krieger, and Tyler Hronek. Bless them this coming year, keeping them mindful that each day is a gift from you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, we commend all these people and situations into your hands, for you have promised to hear our prayers through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We are bold to pray the prayer our Lord gave us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, God, hallowed be thy heaven. name. Thy God, kingdom God. come, thy God, will God. be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. If you're communing at your seat, take and eat the body of Christ for you. And in the same manner also after supper, he took the cup. And when he given thanks, he gave to them and said, drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new testament of my blood shed for you for the remission of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. If you're communing at your seat, take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. As far as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, 
in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink. You lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. Amen. Amen. Seated.
May the eating and the drinking of your Lord's body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. God's peace go with you always. Amen. And we pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this meal. Help us to resist temptation by daily reminding us of our identity as your baptized children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I just want you to be aware that the flower sign up for the Easter flowers, it's online. Uh, you can also, um, through, through the um, News and Brief link, it's there. And then we'll we have, I think, two weekends to do that. We could also, um, we could do it on the tablets, too, if you need to in the back. I could that's up there for you. Um, Janet has an announcement here about something that's very important coming up here in the <coughs> early summer, which will be before you know it, thank goodness, right? So I'm always happy to come and have a chance to give praise to God for hearing our prayers. So we've been praying about relaunching our Sunday school, and I'm excited to let you know that's going to launch on Sunday, June 2nd. So thankful for all those who said yes to the call to help teach. And then my uh, call to action for the rest of you is to be praying about um, inviting. We're going to have materials available for you in the next couple of weeks so that you can start to invite kids in your neighborhood, your family, anybody that you know that ha would have an interest in joining us. Our plan is to have Sunday school during the time of our worship service. So we would have the kids start with us and stay through the children's message and then adjourn to Sunday school until the end of worship service. We're going to use a one-room schoolhouse model that gives us the chance to have all the kids together in one room, older kids learning how to help the younger kids. And this is a model that the district has found work really well for our Sunday school, so we're excited to launch with that model. Um, we'll um, have more details about registration materials uh, coming up 
and just uh, excited uh, for the chance to, for those who are interested, still thinking about wanting to help teach. This Wednesday after the lunch service, we're gonna have a chance to take a look at the Sunday school room. So for those teachers who've already signed up or those who are thinking about it, uh, stay after the service on Wednesday for a little tour of the room. I'll be available after service for any questions, um, but thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your leadership on that as well. Cheryl, something's coming up well, way before June 2nd, right? Yeah, we're talking about next Sunday. Um, we're having a pop-up event next Sunday. Um, it's a movie called Ordinary Angels. It's a faith-based movie with Hilary Swank and Alan Richson, and um, the movie will be next Sunday. It's at Charlestown Mall at two o'clock in the afternoon. Anyone that wants to come, tickets are $7. It's about a, Hillary Swank is a hairdresser slash um, alcoholic who um, helps a family in need that is $400,000 in debt because the mother has passed and he has two little girls to raise and the five-year-old ends up needing a liver transplant and they go through a snowstorm to get to the hospital. So that's what the movie's about. And so anyone that's interested in going, either talk to me out and back or meet us at the show next week on Sunday. What's Thanks. Time? It's at two o'clock next Sunday and the tickets are $7. Thank you. All right, thank you very mm -hmm. much. Uh, one more thing before we go. We uh, had a, a special day yesterday for someone in our congregation who celebrated his birthday. <laughs> and and it's, it's, I'm, I'm very happy that the band is here for this one. Oh. <laughs> Join us and sing it, please. Happy birthday to you. I guess I spent it doing things pastors normally do on Saturday. I did pastoral duties in the morning and part of the afternoon. And then I did my laundry and my ironing. <laughs> and took a nap. So uh, one other thing is, remember during this Lenten season, we're starting a bring one, just one thing. I'll get this down by Easter. Just one thing, and the one thing that you bring this week for, for the local food pantries is bandages. Bar soap. Nope. I have to put my, well, I just put my bandages. Whatever, put bandages and bar soap in there. Then <laughs> we'll keep that going. Receive now the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.